this morning. I said, well, Pete, you know, well, found out, found out that uh, he, his birthday's today. He's 90. And I didn't find out actually until at the end of the, at the afterwards. But anyway, if you get a chance, give him a call and, uh, you know, uh, ask him what it feels like to be in those 90s, you know. And uh, what's it feel like, Pete? Anyway, that was, uh, was funny when they came in. We're glad that you all are here. It's a, a joy that you're here. I, I look forward to worshiping with you and sharing the scriptures. So let's have a, a prayer together. We get to hear this choir, man. I'm excited. And, uh, uh, right? I mean, hey, you know, we'll take what we can get, can't we? We just, no, I tell you what, these guys are tremendous with their voices, and uh, I love it all. So let's pray together. Father, we come before you, and we just want to we just want to pause. I mean, um, um, you know, one of the verses that comes to mind, uh, Psalm eight, where it says, "What is man that you're mindful of him?" <laughs> and so, uh, uh, Father, you, would you help us to um, uh, recognize that you meeting with us is a gift? Um, this is uh, we help us not to take these moments lightly. We want, um, we want Christ to be exalted, and we want to enjoy uh, fellowship with you. Uh, Father, thank you for this church. Um, even as we consider All Saints uh, Day, and uh, we think about people that have gone on before us, who have sacrificed so much, uh, that we could be even here today meeting. I want to thank you for those people. Um, so, Father, we pray that you'll use us uh, to, uh, to continue the faith. And uh, bless this time, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. church. It is wonderful to see y'all if you're here in person with us or if you're joining us online. We are so thrilled that you've joined us on such a beautiful fall morning. Let's stand together this morning. Let's begin worship with Bind Us Together, hymn 390. If you will, join me with responsive reading. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but the same God works all of them in all men. Now to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. The body is a unit, though it is made up of many parts. Though all its parts are many, they form one body. So it is in Christ, for we are all baptized by one spirit into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slave or free, and we were all given the one spirit to drink. God has 
has combined the members of the body and has given greater honor to the parts that lacked it, so that there should be no divisions in the body, but that its parts should have equal concern for each other. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. Thank you, Robin, so much for reading our responsive reading. Let's continue this morning with They'll Know We Are Christians, hymn 385. Mm -hmm. sacrifice was for me and for everyone, and I uh, am still blessed by that, and I thank you. So, Father, I pray that you'll uh, continue your marvelous work in our lives as we come closer to him and as we become uh, like him, and I thank you. We pray in Jesus' name. For the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
come before your throne today. We ask that you'll receive our worship and our praise. We ask that you'll be with us this time and at this hour. We love you. We love everything you do. You're holy, and your glory continues to shine forever and ever. Accept this worship today, Lord. In Jesus' name. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to the Lord's table. Thank God for such a beautiful day. I don't know why, but I think fall may be my favorite part of the year. Uh, whether it's football on Sundays, uh, whether it's the coldness in the morning. Like I told Tom this morning, we get to wear our sweaters for this little brief time in Arkansas. I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful that God gave us seasons and that he gave us life. Uh, as we move from Halloween, which I'm glad is over, we go into Thanksgiving, then Christmas is next, and before you know it, it's Easter and it's summertime again. Let us worship God. Let us slow down. Let us enjoy all of these days that aren't special days because every day we wake up and look outside, it's a special day because we have the Lord Jesus Christ with us daily. Jesus Christ determined that he wanted to have the Passover meal with the people that he loved the most, his disciples. So Jesus and the disciples went to a quiet place. They shared the meal. They shared fellowship. I'm sure they answered lots of questions and had lots of questions. And when the meal is finished, Jesus took from the table just simple bread. He broke the bread saying, this represents my body, which will be broken for you. Take it, eat. And likewise, Jesus took the cup, and after blessing the cup, he shared it with all the disciples in turn, saying, this represents my blood. My blood is to be shed for you for the forgiveness of your sin, and for the sins of many. Take it, drink. <laughs> thank you for this morning and I ask that you'll bless those who gave offerings today and that you'll bless all of us though Lord and that you'll multiply these offerings and grow them and use them for the advancement of your kingdom in Jesus name Amen
for that. Mm. I love that when you all sing for us and for him. Um, in Mark, we're going to be in Mark chapter four in, in a moment. It was it was I was reading this week. Uh, it's, it's not this is not a normal quote that I would give, but Denzel Washington said something pretty cool. I like him a lot. Uh, I think he's one of the best actors out there. But he made the statement. Uh, he said, uh, "If you don't read the news, then you're not getting information, and if you read it, you're getting misinformation." <laughs> Uh, there's a lot of truth to that. But what I want to tell you uh, this morning is that in John chapter 7, uh, uh, verse 17, the Bible actually says that if you want to know the truth, you'll know the truth. I'm paraphrasing that passage, but you can look at it. If you want to know the truth, uh, then, then God will reveal to you the truth. The passage that we're going to look at um, is dealing with the heart. The heart of the listener. And in it, it talks about how that uh, uh, some hearts are not prepared. And uh, it, the, the responsibility is not uh, given specifically to the sower, nor is it given specifically to the seed itself. Because the seed is the word of God. You'll see that in the passage. Um, and so uh, the focus of the message is the heart. It's the desire or maybe the strong desire to hear God. Um, and so, uh, for example, in the scriptures, it says things like this. Uh, in Isaiah 66, 2, it says, uh, it says, this is the one the Lord looks to. He who is of a uh, humble and contrite spirit who trembles at my word. Um, in Ecclesiastes chapter 5, it says, when you come to uh, the, when you come before God, remember you're on earth, he is in heaven, and when you come, don't come with a lot of words, come to listen. And so we're talking about a heart that has been prepared. So I'm going to read this passage, the interpretation of the, of the parable in just a moment. He really gives a really sobering statement when he says, you know, I, I do it in parables because quite frankly, uh, and again, I'm going to paraphrase, but you can look at it. Those who really don't want to hear aren't going to be able to understand because they won't search it out anyway. But those who want to hear, I've given them the kingdom. And so, we, uh, so we, we're going to begin in verse 10. It's actually verses 1 through 20 is the story. Uh, but we're going to begin in verse 10. It goes like this. When he was alone, the 12, and the 12 and the others around him asked him about the parables. He told them, the secret of the kingdom of God has been given to you, but to those on the outside, everything is said in parables. Before I go on, just remember what they had said earlier. Uh, they were accusing Jesus of being uh, a demon. So that they may ever be seeing, but never perceiving, and ever hearing, but never understanding. Otherwise, they might turn and be forgiven. Then Jesus said to them, don't you understand this parable? How then will you understand any parable? In other words, you're going to understand them if you'll know this one. The farmer sows the word. Some people are like seed along the path where the word is sown. As soon as they hear it, Satan comes along and takes away the word that was sown in them. Others, like seed sown on rocky places, hear the word and at once receive with joy. But since they have no root... They last only a short time when trouble or persecution comes. Because of the word, they quickly fall away. 
Still others, like seed sown among thorns, hear the word. But the worries of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth and the desires for other things come in and chop the word, making it unfruitful. Others, like seed sown on good soil, hear the word, accept it, produce a crop, some 30, some 60, some 100 times what was sown. And if you were to look in Luke chapter 8, you'd see that not only do they produce fruit, but they endure. Okay. So bottom line is, where you and I want to be, uh, where you and I want to be is, uh, we want to be the faith that produces fruit. One. Secondly, we want to be the ones that produce fruit, but we want to continue to bear fruit. That's what we want to be. We don't want to be like the first one that the, the seed was sown and fell along the, the, uh, the wayside, and uh, the, the birds come along and just eat it up. It doesn't go anywhere. Uh, bring up the first point, if you would. We'll just do it this way. Uh, we're going to do this very quickly, and then we'll talk. There is a hearing of the scriptures that is so uninterested that they are distracted by anything within sight or sound. In other words, uh, that's why the devil comes and steals something. He just, you know, he reminds you, well, did you see what so-and-so had on? You know, did you see what, you know, why is so-and-so here? Or... You know, I really didn't like that song that was chosen. You know, just Satan comes along and just sort of steals it, right? Just, ah, you know, they're so interested, uninterested in the word that it's real easy for them to get, to get distracted by something else, okay? Second, there is a hearing that is driven by the emotion of joy, but as soon as it is unpopular or persecuted or find themselves in hardship, they walk away. In other words, um, they hear the message, oh my gosh, man, I get to go to heaven, and God loves me, and they jump in this thing, and because there's, there, it, it, the, the root didn't go down into the heart, didn't go deep into the soil, it came up very quickly, looked good, we're excited, they became believers, but all of a sudden, man, all of a sudden it's not popular, it's like, it's like, it's, it's like they're making fun of me because I believe. Uh, and they hit the first hardship, and they walk away. That's what they did. Verses 16 and 17. Number three. Thanks, Brent, for helping me out. And then there is a hearing that has uh, never grasped the value of the voice of God in his word that is way beyond the value the senseless messages of the heart. In other words, the messages of the heart would be that they're so con they, they, they become so consumed by the worries of life, the cares of life, and, and everything that's going on around that, uh, that, 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 that that takes all of their energy and all of their mind and all of their heart. Another one would be that the that riches. They had this, this, the, the deception that riches would actually satisfy the longings of the heart. Now listen to me, riches are not the problem. The problem is the heart. The heart thinking that that's going to satisfy me. Or that, or that uh, you know, somehow it's going to last forever. Um, I have a verse that I put on my business card and it says this. Psalm 63, 3, and it says, uh, well, verse, uh, verses 1 through 3, basically, but I just took a little part of chapter, verse 1, and then part of verse 3, it says, Lord, I'm going to seek you in the morning, because your loving kindness is better than life. <laughs> in other words, God, I found out that, you know, that, and, and that's really one of the things that happens in, uh, in, in the believer's life, where their faith takes you, it takes you to a place where you're going, God, you're amazing. And I wouldn't want anything else. In fact, God, I'd give up everything for you. That's where it takes you. Thirdly, and by the way, I am really going by the, uh, by the passage itself there. And the heart seems to always want something more. It's like, it's like you know, you get that, and then you, know, you want something. And I've done it. Haven't you guys done that? You know? I mean, I remember, uh, you know, just, I mean, just in life, you tend to do that. But the question is, is that, is that, is that, that more important than him? Because that, 
thing become more important than him because it says they have desire for other things. They have desire for other things. They have desire for other things. And so, you know, I remember, you know, I had this particular car, and I got this car, and I was like, man, I really like this car. And I was like, hmm, I like that car better. And then I want that car, and then maybe I'll get out on, and, and, and if I got that car, and I did that, I did that with a, a, a Mustang, and then I did it with a certain Camaro, and I, and I got it. And you know what's so funny? After about a year or two, two years, usually it's my max. I go, man, you know, this isn't as great as I thought it was. You know, it just isn't as great as I thought. But watch this. Uh, you see, Ultimately, this particular person who receives the word, the cares of the world, the deceitfulness of riches. You understand the deceitfulness of riches? Everybody, you know, we've all been there. Uh, the, the, the desire for other things, all that stuff. But watch this. Really, ultimately, this particular person is a person that never repented. What, what you say, now why is that? Why would you say that? Well, because, because the thorns that are there, the, the, the weeds that are there, uh, were never taken away. They remain. And what they did was they sucked all the nutrients, all the energy of that person, and their faith just went away. There was no fruit as a result. So the fourth one is the one you and I want. Uh, number four, uh, Brent, there it is. Then there's one who hears, whose heart refuses any other message but the living word of God, whose life becomes changed. Now, now listen, as far as the life being changed, look, I mean, there's really, uh, and I'm going to say this, and we can talk about this, but there's really not uh, a, a lot of effort that we have to do for our lives to be changed. I'm just going to be honest with you. He which done, you know, he which began a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus. I've got to tell you that for my life to change, it's not going to be because of my strength. It's not going to be because I'm so smart. It's not. In fact, in, in chapter 2, verse 13 of Philippians, it says, um, it says, he works in you both to desire and to do his good work. He moves in you. And so all of a sudden, you know, there's this desire to be different. Now watch this. Here's what faith tends to do. And you might put this in a little different order than myself, okay? But here's what faith tends to do. You, 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 you begin believing. Uh, you read this in 1 Peter chapter 1. You begin believing. And uh, what happens is, is that that belief that Christ died, and then, it, then, then, then you begin to grow to this place where you're going, wait a minute, wait, wait, wait. He died for me. And that begins to blow you away. And then you come to a realization that he died for everybody, even around you. Watch this. And then what happens, the Bible teaches, is that you, you love him. You don't see him, but you love him. And I got to tell you something about love. It grows. It keeps growing. And that's what's going on. But then if you follow, you know, the scriptures, what you find is, is all of a sudden, not only do you fall in love with him, you want to be obedient to him. And as you're being obedient to him, all of a sudden, um, you know, you want to you wanna live like him. And pretty soon, you come to this place where holiness becomes important. And then you come to this place where you realize that I belong to him. And my life is his. Right? We, we, you follow the, 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 the teachings of Jesus? He who takes up his cross and follows me is my disciple. So you see there's just this progression. And usually, I don't know, it usually doesn't happen on the first day that you ask Jesus to come into your life or that you believe in him. But I'm telling you, because it's his work, those are the things that begin to go on in your life. But we can go further than that. Because you and I want to have the kind of faith, one, that stays with him, that stays with him. We want to have that kind of faith. But also the kind of faith that produces fruit. Produces fruit. And so... What we see is, when we look at it, what, what, what fruit is, okay, for example, let me give you some examples of the scripture. You could go to Hebrews 13, and a couple of things that are, that are fruitful is, I mean, I'm just telling as it says it, um, that, that it would be the sacrifice of praise, or the sacrifice of thanksgiving. Isn't that interesting? No, you know, guys, I got to tell you, it's really, really difficult to have a, a heart 
of thanksgiving and complain at the same time. You guys ever try to do that? Try to do that sometime. God, I'm so thankful, but God, I, you know. No, 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 it's real hard to have the both. But that's where he takes us. Well, so that would be one fruit. It does. In fact, it says that in Hebrews 13. Another one is, is that we would, when we help other people, when we help other people, that's a fruit of God in our lives. See, we want, and so, so here's my thought on this, and I want to talk about this to you, uh, because our church, watch this. I think we ought to think big about this stuff. If he considers that a sacrifice, if he considers that something pleasing, that's what it says, a sacrifice pleasing to him, and man, then we ought to be thinking big. <laughs> when you go to Matthew chapter 25, and he talks about those that are going into the kingdom, you know what they're like? They care about the poor. They care about those who are thirsty. They care about those who are hungry. They care about those who are in prison. They care about, um, uh, you know, uh, those that are naked. I mean, you follow me? And that's what, okay, so if he's concerned about those, and I would often go, often go, and I would go into a prison, I would say, you know, guys, I want you to know that the, the, those, the guys and girls that come in to see you guys, I want you to know that God wants you to know, he wants you to know that he loves you too. That's why I keep sending people in here to tell you that. <sighs> okay. So as a church, and again, I'm going to bring this up, and I and I don't want you. I do not want you to think that I've got I've got one agenda, but I don't have like an agenda about this issue. So I want to bring it up again to you, just because we're we're, we're talking here. This is we're just talking. You see, um, you know, we we had brought up about building a building, which I think is a is a fantastic idea. Uh, you know, because I am convinced that the Lord can lead the church to do something like that. No doubt in my mind. No doubt. God can use, God can lead the church. Now listen to me, as you and I are submitting, as all of us are submitting to the Spirit of God in our lives, we, now listen, if that's what he wants to do, and that might be exactly what we do, you know, starting in January. I don't know, I'm just saying, I, I think whatever, however the Lord leads the church, to build a building that's, you know, um, but I want us also to think in these terms and say, wait a minute, you know what, so what, what is God want us to be interested in? Uh, let me give you uh, one more thing about fruit. Okay, you guys ready? It's found in uh, Romans, uh, Romans 15 and verse 16. And it says the, the offering of Gentiles or, you know, to God is a fruit, is a, is a sacrifice to him. What does that mean? It's sharing your faith with people. It's just sharing your faith. And so, so, so wait a minute. Let's talk here for a minute. In other words, that's, the, you see in the scripture, it's not like we have to wonder what God wants us to do. We see in the scripture what he wants us to be a part of, see? In fact, even, even in sharing, you know, helping somebody with food or helping somebody with water or helping somebody that's in prison or somebody that's sick or whatever, you know what the goal is? It's all, the same goal. The goal is always the same, is that when they see your good works, Matthew 5, when they see your good works, they will glorify your Father in heaven. Now, that's our goal. We, 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 we don't want it. In fact, as you grow in your faith, the less you want it. The less you want it. You, we got to have him glorified. That's it. And so, uh, so, so again, remember the, the, the different uh, hearts? One, so uninterested that they, you know, anything can distract them. The other one is, uh, it, you know, gets excited about heaven and, and, and uh, gets excited about love, but all of a sudden something happens, you know, and they're out. And then the other one still has other stuff hanging around. You know, they really have other stuff that has, uh, they have more interest in something else than they do him. But we want to be those people whose faith um, changes them. Okay, so let me, let me, I'm going to give you, a, oh good, I'm doing really good on time. So I'm just, I'm almost done. Isn't that great? Now watch this though. I don't want to miss it because this is kind of, for me, this is the best part. Uh, the only passage I'm going to look at next, uh, Brent, just so you're ready, is going to be that passage, uh, uh, 2 Timothy 4 in a minute. Okay, I'm going to, uh, thank you. I'll be there in a minute. <laughs> okay, so... 
we know the fruit is thanksgiving. We know the fruit is helping people. We know the fruit is sharing our faith, that other people can go to heaven too. <clears throat> but there's also the fruit of the Spirit. So let me get kind of run through those, those nine fruit. You see, see one <clears throat> would be love. Uh, love is given when it's undeserved. Isn't that what God did with us? What he did with me. That's what he did with me. And you know, one of the hard parts, for example, for myself is, for example, in Ephesians chapter 4, is that, um, is that, you know, God's intention is that we become more and more like Christ. And so he says in that passage that we need to speak the truth in love. Sometimes the truth doesn't feel right. Secondly, not only love, but joy. Joy is when, when you can actually be in difficult, you can have difficult experiences, and yet joy still be there. Paul put it this way. He said, he said, um, sorrowful, yet always joyful. Watch this. Circumstances make me sorrowful, but he gives me joy. I'm going to listen to me. It's not something you have to conjure up. You don't have to make it up. You don't have to, I'm going to have joy today. I'm going to have joy today. I'm going to have joy today. I'm just going to have a good attitude. I'm going to think it right. No, no, no. Forget all that stuff. I mean, all those self-help books. Listen to me, man. I tell you what, they'll take you down a road that will make you miserable eventually. Here's what you do. You say, God, I don't have joy. Would you give it to me? Would you give it to me? And I would, I would, I would hold on because he's going to give you. God give me love. But hang on because he's going to give it to you. Peace in the midst of turmoil. You can have peace in a storm. You can have. I didn't say that you always do. I'm just saying you can have. Why? Because of the Holy Spirit. Patience when waiting is not what you want to do. Patience means to remain under. These are fruit of the Spirit. You see, we want to have a kind of faith that produces fruit. See? That's what we want. Um, kindness, even for those that are mean. Goodness, being, doing good when it's unexpected. Faithfulness, when others are not. Gentle, when strength is what you want to show. Self-control, when it's easier to say the harsh things. All right. So, because that you and I, the audience that you and I really have this morning is not anybody in this room. And it's not somebody out there. Our, our audience is not, is not to please everybody that we can try to please. We have an audience of one. You and I have the answer. And it's going to be a great time there's going to be stuff that's just going to burn up, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, because we did it for us. It was about me. And not about him. Watch this. In the presence of God, it's a great experience when you keep going through your day on Monday and Tuesday, you know that you're in the presence of God. And of Christ Jesus, who will judge the living and the dead. And in view of his appearing in his kingdom, which is coming, I give you this charge. Preach the word. Be prepared in season and out of season. Correct, rebuke, and encourage with great patience and careful instruction. I got to tell you, as a pastor, I want you to know that I know, I think, I believe that I have this gift of encouragement. So I love doing that all day long. But sometimes there are things that are hard to say. For well, the time will come when people will not put up with sound teaching. Doctrine means teaching. It's not talking about policies or traditions or anything. It's talking about teaching. They will not put up with sound teaching. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear. They just want to hear certain things. Watch this. They will turn their ears away from the truth and turn aside the myth. So here's what you and I want. What do we want? 
What do you want? Anybody that wants to know the truth will know the truth, John said. There's no question about it. God is like that. That's what God is. And so what you and I want is just the truth. Just be the truth. As I read John 14 through 16, where he talks about our union with God, our union with Jesus, our union with the Father, our union with the Spirit, watch this. Is that one of the ways that he comforts us is he tells us the truth for goodness sakes. Just tell me the truth. Tell me the truth. And so, the kind of faith you and I want is one that endures. Two, one that receives the word of God. And, and it, will be, it will be the richest experience of your life as you and I allow the Word of God to change us so that our thoughts become like His. Our heart becomes like His. And so may the Lord help us have a heart that receives anything he wants to say to us. Let's pray together. Father, I thank you for your word. Uh, you are so kind to us. You are gracious to us. I thank you for this church, Lord. I am I, I am convinced that you're the one who started it. And I love that. I, I am so comfortable with that great truth. You put a passion in the hearts of some marvelous people back in the 1800s. Thank you for them. Wow. Father, bless this church. That when people see us, they glorify you and none of us. I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We're going to sing together. Blessed be the tie that binds. Would you stand with us, please?
pray this in the name of your Son.